So today we have to do the wrap up the chapter three. So, so we actually start just before the 3.4, which is the confidence interval. So I'm gonna start, uh, start the confidence, what the confidence interval is, and then uh, try to do the rest of the rest of the contents of the chapter three. Okay. So let's see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, everyone can see the my writing like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, so is, as you hear the confidence in. Last time we actually talk about the hypothesis test, and then when we uh, in in the previous chapters, we can actually calculate about the, what the t through the t test formula. Like we can calculate about the what, what is the t score is. So confidence interval is a kind of like a, when. Uh, when by using the sample population, what's the how, what's the possible range range of the real true population means gonna be? So that means confidence interval for the population means. So confidence interval is uh, usually used to we do not know the population mean, but the thing is we by using the our sample mean or sam uh, the parameter of the samples. When we try to know about the real uh, true population mean, we can calculate the confidence interval. So that means it is called, it, it might be the like a possible, possible range, possible range of the, of the mean for the population. So in general, confidence interval is unknown population is a less P the repeated samples. So you need the interval to contain the true parameter with the probability for, for specified probability like a confidence level. So depending on the how how confident we are like 90% or maybe 95% or sometimes even like a, even the 99% for the maybe medical kind of experiment. Depending on the what kind of confidence we need, we can try to maybe when we have a ninety percent, it might be the much wider, and then a ninety-five percent, it is a little bit narrow, and then ninety-nine percent is a very narrow, kind of a, to get the to get the population mean for that. So. Uh, As you can see here, the so confidence interval for the population mean can be calculated by using the y bar means that this is the actually sample mean, which is the we know. And then you can actually uh, keep an eye on the, these numbers because uh, this, this, this is the kind of a t-score value for the 0.05 uh, 0 0.005 percent. Ah, no, no, not me. It is a uh, one percent means a uh, 0.5 percent range, and this one is uh 2.5 percent. This one is five percent. Cause uh, when we actually looking at the uh, this normal to uh normal distribution kind of things. We, when we, this right here, like a P, this is the number for all of this 99%, 95%, 90% kind of interval. So whenever we get the, this kind of, do the, these formulas, actually we can get the kind of like a, my uh, negative and positive kind of a range usually, or maybe both positive or both the negative kind of range. So that actually allows us to get the confidence interval like this. 
So for example, when when the when the sample mean is uh, five point one, and then a uh, standard er error is the two point five, through the through the formula we can get the confidence interval for the ninety five percent, which is the one point nine six, gonna be point between point two and ten, which means uh, between the point two and ten in here. Maybe in somewhere in between these two range, these two number, there might be the possible population mean. Maybe we don't know where, we don't know exactly where, but we can just infer that our population mean gonna be between those two numbers. Everyone understand that? And then any questions? Yeah, no, it's, I, I well, got that one. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. So let's rip that out. And then. Okay. So. So sorry, can we like uh, uh, say that the, the, the sort of the, the 1.96, uh, let's say the, is it the, the 1.96? And uh, times the standard error is like the margin of error, something like this. Mm, yes, right. It is a it is a margin of error, is which is the MOE. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's correct. It is the MOE, and also we we usually so we usually sometimes sometimes we can calculate in the in the our our linear regressions in R. When we when we try to calculate the maybe LM command, like a y is a x one plus x two blah 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 blah. In that case, when we when we try to get the summary for the feed, like uh, for example, this one is the feed. Maybe in that case, maybe when we when we do the summary, we can get the the first is a coefficient. And then, and then there is a standard error, and then there is a t t value, and there is a p value right there. Yeah. So using when we say about the coefficient is that this one is the sample mean. So by using the standard error, we can actually calculate about the what the coefficients range gonna be like a, like a multiply by one point nine six. This is the Maybe x one is the coefficients like uh, like this, like uh, for example, like uh, two point zero five or something. Maybe we and then our standard error is a uh, point like point zero one six, for example. Maybe in that case we can calculate the possible two or five multiplied by one point nine six per multiply point. Uh, 016 this one actually give us give us the possible range uh, of the population mean as a 95% confidence interval and also in the meta in the meta analysis maybe we can actually get some kind of a plot like this which is that this is a zero value and this is a negative, this is a positive. And then uh, there is a set of the study point one, study point two, et cetera. And then we can actually, sometimes we can actually draw the graphs like this. Then like this, for example. So in that case, we can actually figure out that uh, this little square is the possible pop actually sample mean for the this one. And then uh, we actually set up the range. But the thing is in case of the study two, uh, study two, it is actually range gonna be the negative between the negative to the positive, which means we contain the zero value in the study two. So, in that case, through the graph, we can tell that tell the study two does not have a 
does that have a lower p value, like a more, more, more than 0.05 kind of p values? But, but in this study one and then the other, the other cases, these are the highly significant compared to the study two. We can actually recognize that through the plot in the meta analysis. So we usually can get that this kind of a confidence interval looks like a plus for the meta analysis or sometimes the linear regressions. So in that case, it is very useful to, uh, to calculate the confidence interval. So in here, so actually in here, the, the book actually tried to mathematically try to show the show the how we can calculate the uh, t values because it is very easy because I provide the uh, provide the one single command called the t test functions from the stat packages. So by using this one, we can actually get the get a lot of information related to the t test as a list. So when you're looking at the, by using the ls command, which means the listing the object within the, that, that uh, uh, within the uh, elements within the that objects, there is actually 10 different kinds of objectives. Alternatives, confidence interval, data name. The estimate is uh, what we can say the sample mean. And the method and the value, p values, etc. So when in here, when we say about the confidence interval like this, and then a confidence interval is a nine five percent level going to be calculated as a default. So when we thinking about the this number like a 0 0.31 to 1287, which is the all of the positive kind of things. So in the later in chapter, we can actually thinking about the kind of a hypothesis testing. So in their cases, this coefficient is highly significant because it is always positive, you know. So that's the how it works. So, so as you can see here, when we do the t test for the calculated constant insert interval, it is also automatically conduct a two side significant test. Because uh, in the previous chapter, when we have do the two side Two-sided t test, uh, t test. We actually the hypothesis is the d one, uh, d one, uh, d zero is uh, uh, zero, and then and the alternative is uh, d zero is uh, not the zero. So, so that means which means our when we calculate the confidence interval. That confidence interval, whether that confidence interval contains a zero value or not, can be can be the some kind of a two-sided t test based on the these two these hypotheses. Okay. So that's the kind of thing. So. So as you can see here, when we're looking at the up to the top, this number, like as a confidence interval, does not have uh, any zero values between the range. And then that means P value is uh, very low. So which means when we get the, this kind of a coefficient, coefficients and then a confidence interval, we can say there is a very low possibility we can get the zero value, which means we can, we can say that we can know, we can reject the null hypothesis, which is mu y is a zero. So, and then, so, so that's the thing, confidence interval. So any, everyone, anyone have questions? Any questions? No? Okay. So in the 3.5 actually can have a have a, a this different perspectives because in the previous chapters we only use the sample we only use the sample mean 
for the for the one from the one popul or single population, like a single sample mean. But the thing is, in this case, what if what if that that means come from the come from the different populations? So that means we actually draw the sample, but those sam we are not sure about the, those sample actually come from the same population or not. So in that case, we can actually compare those two, those two sample, like uh, S1 and S2. So we are not sure these are the actually from the same, same drone, the same population or not. So in that case, we can actually comparing the mean from the two, these two different populations. So how we can set up the hypothesis is when, if we have, we can get get the same we can get the sample from the same populations its expected value which is the mean gonna be the same that's gonna be the null hypothesis so which means e s1 minus e s2 equals zero this is the null hypothesis and h1 is H1 is the other otherwise, like uh, not equal. So that means ES1 minus ES2 is not equal to zero, maybe negative or positive, whatever. So we can test these two things and then we can calculate the T values by using the 3.7 formula. We keep, I can, we actually, uh, try to prove the, well, how we can get these kind of things. But the thing is, uh, as far as I know, I remember this one is a very, very complicated. So it is very hard to remember. And then we don't need to remember. So, and then standard error is uh, this kind of thing. So which means each sample size, uh, each, uh, each standard, each variance divided by each sample size with the root. So, so that's the how we can calculate the standard error. And then the T value is just kind of a matter of uh, difference, difference of difference of mean here, here. And then this one is just kind of a uh, D0 is just kind of an initial, initial mean value, initial mean value we set up. Okay, actually in here I said say zero and is a not zero is a, this one is actually, when we get the regressions or t-test, we can actually do the, you also use the zero value, but if we have any kind of a predefined the setup mean value, we can use the that one as a D zero. So confidence interval is the same. So, but the, but the difference is that we use the difference of mean between the, those two sample means and also using the that, that standard of the that difference of, of mean. And then plus minus 1.96 is the, this one is a 95% interval in, in there. And then when we get the, these two interval, these two interval actually include the D zero. In that case, in that case, we cannot, we cannot know, we cannot reject, reject the null hypothesis. So that means the P value is pretty high. Maybe it does not include the D zero values. In that case, we can actually reject the, reject the null hypothesis. So P value gonna be very low. Yeah, less than point, less than 0 0.05 kind of a p values. That's the how we can get by when we using the in, uh, confidence interval. And then, uh, so in R, it is also the same thing. So for example, when we get the two different sample in here, by using the t test, and then uh, we can uh, specify those two data. 
R automatically calculates about the T values and P values. And then depending on those two, those two things, we can calculate about the confidence interval. So in this case, alternative high, uh, the hypothesis is uh, is the uh, E S one minus the E S two equals zero. So, but so in here, the, so that's why it says like this: alternative hypothesis hypothesis is uh, not not equal to zero. So a, in this case, a zero, the hypothesis is uh, equals to zero, and alternative is not zero. So that's the what this one says. So after testing that, when we calculate the confidence interval in this case, actually between the, those two ranges actually contains a, uh, contains a zero value, which means we cannot reject, uh, uh, reject null hypothesis. That's the reason why we have get the P value is much more than 0.05 in this case. Okay, that's the, how we can uh, interpret the result of the t test functions in R. So, any anyone has any questions so far? In, like, yeah, yeah, I'm saying if we like say we don't reject the null, is it is it okay to say oh we we accept it then? Oh, oh in this case we. We reject the null hypothesis. That means p value is not significant. Yeah. So, so in that case, maybe for example, in the regression model, if this one is a kind of like a one, one kind of a uh, variable, in that case, that variable is not significant. So that means it is not related, uh, significant to associate with the outcome. So that means we cannot say that that value is the, maybe I would say maybe contributing factor to increase or decrease dependent variable in the modeling approaches. So in this case, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So that means it is not significant at all. Yeah, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm saying in, in that case, do we, can we be correct to say, oh, the null is, then the null is true or something like this? Can we? Yeah, yeah, that is the true. Yeah, that is the true. And then that means that it contains a zero value in it. So which means there is a, actually, actually, the, actually those samples actually come from the same population, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, that's the how we can calculate, we can infer from the, this, this, yeah, from this summary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so which means, uh, we, yeah, just that is a good point. So that means that we cannot reject, we cannot reject the null hypothesis, which is the, which is the zero. Yeah. That means S1, S2 actually come from the same populations, depending on in terms of the mean values, you yeah. know? Yeah, that's the how, how this one, this one can be uh, interpreted. So, yeah. yep. And then in, in the 3.6 is a kind of like a applications of the gender gap earnings. Yeah, so this one is a kind of like a interesting, interesting data set about the, maybe in a social science or social work or especially urban planning like me, we actually sometimes using this one because uh, this one actually come from the come from the census data in uh, in the US census data so maybe i can i can show you uh i can just for the uh for the reference i can show you the uh, so where this one can be found? So everyone, everyone see the my Google screenshots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So 
when you Google the NHGIS, which is the kind of the national historic GIS, you can get the, this kind of a website. And then when you click the get data, and then maybe geographic level gonna be maybe I would say county. And then uh and then click that one and submit. And maybe data set gonna be the most recent one, like uh, American Community Survey Data Five Year Estimate. And then when we click the 500, so there is a 377 different source tables in the case. And then uh, when the when you uh, the gender gap of the earning can be calculated by using the B2004, which means um, uh, maybe down here, like a like, like a zero zero one, like a, in here in this case, we can there is actually kind of a range of the this earning statistics, and then using the these things we can actually calculate the average uh, gender gap values throughout the range age, because there is a whole different kind of earning values in here, like median earnings, aggregate earnings and etc. So by using the these kind of uh, data set we can actually calculate the calculate the gender gap. And also also there is a, some some data set about the median earnings by the different industrial sector by sex. So in that case we can say we can calculate about the what's the gender gap earning gender gap of earning depending on the what kind of uh, industrial sector. That might be also gonna be the interesting question because depending on the what kind of uh, industrial sector, which means what kind of business are you in, there might be the huge gender gap of the earning between uh, in that specific uh, industrial, industrial sectors. In that case, there is a, some kind of a lack of a gender equity problem in that industrial sector, which means we have to figure out how we can reduce the this gender gap of the earning in that industrial sector. So those are the kind of uh, very interesting questions we can address. And then uh, we can also devise some kind of a regression model or more complicated model about the where, how, what kind of a driving factors can uh, uh, contribute to the increase and decrease the this kind of gap. But in this case, actually, Book actually mentions about the, just using the gender gap earnings, how we can calculate the, how, how we, how, how the, how the gender, how the earnings are the different or the same between the male or female. So that's the research question. So in this case, our research question is, what's the, the, the gap uh, in earning, earnings is, a, is a significant between, between, the gen, between the gender or not? That's a kind of a research question. And then uh, in that case, we can actually using the, using the two side, uh, two side T test for the two sampling mean, we can using this, this simple test, we can actually testing these research questions. So gender, so does, so that means does, does the both, do both the female and male actually make a money almost the same, or maybe their their wage are the different, significantly different. That's the how we're gonna test in these examples. So in this case, we can actually learn about the one package for the read Excel. Read Excel is the kind of like a package for the allows us to the reading reading the Excel file like this. And then actually when we, 
when we using the read Excel functions, maybe for example, in the Excel file, maybe if we have a maybe multiple spreadsheet, like a spreadsheet one, spreadsheet two, spreadsheet three, et cetera. In that case, we can actually using the this read Excel function like this, read Excel. And then we can actually specify, we need to specify file path first. And then the other argument is, uh, is a sheet. And then you can actually uh, put the number in it. So in this case, the very first spreadsheet is the index number is one. And second one is the two, third one is the three, et cetera. So if we can read the XF, X, uh, if we want to read the second spreadsheet in that Excel file, our sheet, our sheet number is two. So when we using the this command, we can actually reading the uh, second spreadsheet sheet data in that Excel file. That's how we can do. So in here, actually the, the this seat argument is the omitted because of the the default number is default number is the one. So that means in that Excel file only have a one one single spreadsheet or maybe maybe the, the data we're gonna use in that Excel is the first within located within the first first spreadsheet. That's the how how we can omit the that that spreadsheet. But in, in other cases, we if we want to specify the some uh, some specific spreadsheet number uh, spreadsheet in the Excel, we need to specify number like this. Number seat, seat equals two or three, etc. So that's how we can uh, we can load the spreadsheet, import the spreadsheet data set from the Excel file. And then DP, uh, DPLI wire, like a DPLIR package is a kind of like a kind of like a package that allows us to clean up a very useful function for the calculate, uh, clean up our data set. So in this case, the raw data set actually have a uh, three column, like a uh, A is a sex, which is the categorical variable. So I think one one is the one is the female, right? One is the one is the uh, no one one is the male. Is the two is the female, right? So that's the thing. And then the ear is a kind of a, the ear that measure. And then AH08 is a kind of like a, uh, the earning earning gap, I think. So in this case, the uh, data set actually, uh, actually summarize what is called the long format, which means one row actually has a one observations, but by using the group five functions and then the summarize functions, we can actually summarize to buy uh by the by the gender and year to 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 calculate the our average gender our average earning gaps like this so everyone can understand how this one goes and then also this percent kind of a symbol is what is called a pipeline pipeline indicator so which means in the flow chart we can we can first we can flow the cp uh, get the data set and then by using the group by we can grouping it and then that result actually hand it over to the summarize and then we can get the output. So 
in, uh, between the each functions, these are the kind of what is called the pipeline. So it is actually kind of an approach is used by the Unix. Unix kind of environment. So actually, I actually adopts these kind of a Unix kind of a approaches. Like uh, you can say that each command can be can be uh, considered as a kind of a app application app that allows us to calculate the, each some specific task to get the output. So now we can get uh, these kind of a table. So when we, so now we can try to do the sample uh, 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 two sided t test for the deep, uh, two sample means. So, so in the first, we can actually draw on the only, only subset the male earnings and then the other one is the female earnings and then we can actually uh changing the column name so we can clearly recognize those two and then estimate the gender gap by using the those two data sets and and the standard uh, uh standard error by using the formula in the previous uh, previous sections and the confidence interval can be calculated. And then by using the C bind functions, we can, we can combine male table and female table uh, uh, next to each other. And then this that one is the how we can get this kind of a final final table. So by the year, and then we can get the uh, mean earning for the male, mean earning value for the female. So this is a y bar m. This is a Y bar female. And then a standard deviation is S underscore M, S underscore F. This one is S M and this one is S F. And then uh, the number of male, number of female is the N underscore M, N underscore F. And then we can also calculate the gap and standard error of the gap and then the confidence interval like this. And then when we try to get the T test for these two, we can get the where, how different they are. Or maybe by using the this table with the gap uh, values, we can also calculate about the, this one actually contains a zero or not. If that contain, if gap, if the gap mean value contains a zero. In that case, there is a no difference between the uh, between the earning from uh, between the sex. But if they if the on uh, the gap does not include a zero value, in that case there is a huge significant difference in earning between the gap between the gender. So in this case, when you're using R actually the T value is a kind of like a more than the 2.5 or something. And then P value is a less than 0.05. So in that case, we can safely reject the null hypothesis, which is the, uh, contains the zero value between the, these two interval. So that means, uh, that means uh, Y bar M, and y bar f is different. So that means the gen, there is a huge significant gender, uh, gender gap in earnings between the male and female. That's the how we can testing the, uh, testing the gender gap by using the two side t test for the two sample mean.
Is there any questions so far or anything? Okay, so, so the last chapter is a kind of like a, uh, some kind of a, um, visualizing the relationship between the two, between the two sample or two variable kind of a, uh, uh, two variables. So in this case, well, the most of the, most of the plus we usually use when we have a two, two continuous variable data set. In that case, the most uh, the plot we commonly use is the what is called the scatter plot, which is uh, yeah down here. Like uh, in here, actually they actually calculate about the, some hypothesis kind of a uh, earnings and age. So in this case. Uh, we actually test about the how earnings are the difference depending on the age. So when we plot the, when we plot these two variables, we can get the these, each of the, these points, like a set of the set of the age, comma earnings, like a x and y coordinate uh, coordinate systems. So we can get the, this kind of plot of this kind of a point. And then maybe we can generally just kind of a figure out the, this might have a, uh, this might have a, these kind of a, maybe linear relationships. We do not know how, how this one goes, like a Y equal maybe, uh, beta one multiplied by age plus error term, cause error term is like this. The, the true value between the, these regression predicted mean values. These are the error terms. So, so we can get the, these kind of a formula and then uh, maybe in the later section, we can also calculate the R square about the how how this hypothesis regression line can be explained the variation of the, these plots, these points. So, so anyway, in this case, we can generally figure that out is uh, this kind of a relationship seems to be quite linear first to get the, to get the least, least error. It seems like a desired between the, these two values, there might be the bear, there might be the linear relationships can be identified between the two. That's how we can interpret about the, these visualized outputs. So any questions, anything? Yeah, just to um, um, mention this uh, famous statement, like correlation doesn't, doesn't necessarily imply causation. Hmm? Like, uh, I, I mean, just to mention this correlation doesn't imply causation. I know later the yeah. people just yeah. not that. Right, just right. Yeah. yeah. We can just say that uh, uh, age are the significantly associated with the uh, increase in earnings, which means it seems like, uh, it seems like uh, we can say that the, uh, when the age increases, it, it might be the kind of a possible, highly, high, more likely to increase the earning, so make more money. But, but like you said, correlation does not mean the co, uh, causations, right? But causations actually can, can, can mean the correlations. If we have a, a, a causes, a causes B, that means A, uh, A actually correlates with the B. But the thing is, A is a correlated, the B does not mean that A is A causes B. So in that case, this one can be possible, this one can be okay, but 
this the, the other way cannot be possible. So that's what you say actually. So that's the kind of a correlation and causality kind of things. So, oh, whoops. And then the second part of the things is uh, just kind of uh, showing the showing the mathematical formula about the, how we can calculate the when we have uh, two different two different sample from the different populations, how we can set up the those uh, standard deviation like uh, S X Y, which means the uh, which means the uh, correlation kind of things like this. So, so it's a kind of a sample correlation can be calculated is a kind of a, each standard of mean is the multiply as the denominator here, and then a covariance, uh, covariance up to the top, like this. So that's the how we can calculate the correlation, sample correlation for this. So, as you can see at the bottom, oh, oops, sorry. Uh, how? Yeah, here. So, so in this case, when we calculate the calculate the correlation is uh, in R, there is actually function call. COR, this is the, we can automatically calculate the correlations, but the thing is we can actually manually calculate the, these uh, correlations by using the formula above, like uh, COV is the calculate the covariance. And then as a denominator, we can actually calculate about the each standard deviation of X and Y, and then divide by the uh, divide 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 the covariance means the same thing. So these two are actually calculate the same thing. So that's how it goes. And then the next code is uh, just kind of showing uh, showing the. Just kind of a possible plus, like uh, using the some of the example distributions. So when you're looking at the, this plus down here as a result, these four result. So when you're looking at the correlation, is a 0 0.0 0.81 means very positive relationships with a very small small variations. So so we can. Actually, correlation can get the ba uh, uh, value range between the plus one and negative one. Okay, so when correlation get the zero value, that means that there is a no correlations. When the correlation is the negative close to the one, that means that there is a very strong negative relationship between the those two sample, which means when x value increases, y value decreases. That's the how negative correlations. Positive correlation is when x increases, y is also increases increase. But the larger the larger covariance larger correlation means that there might be the very small variation, which means most of the those points is very near to the this hypoth 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 hypothetical regression line, okay? It is hard to pronounce, Hy hypothetical, hypothetical regression yeah. line. Yeah. <laughs> hypothetical, yeah. Yeah, hypothetical regression line. That, that means 0 0.01 means a very, very small, small variations in, in the error term, okay? Error term will be learned by the next chapter because in the regressions, when we actually do the, this kind of a regression line, there is also have a, some kind of a difference between the actual value to the, this predictive value on the regression line, that is the error term. 
So higher, if we have a higher correlation means the, there might be the very small variation between the error term. So that means we can, in the chapter four, we can also even say that this regression line fits very well to the, our sample observations, which means that regression model can explain explain the, a lot of things to the, our, our sample observations. So that means the regression model is very good. Fits very well uh, in our observation purposes. So in the, in the negative correlation is like this. Maybe if, if we have a correlation like, uh, for example, 0.2, in that case, maybe our, our point is a much, variation is much wider. Maybe draw the regression line, like uh, our error term range is uh, much wider compared to the, compared to the, this, uh, this one in the example. And then when we have a correlation is a zero, is a, it's a flat. So that means, uh, regardless of the x, uh, whether x increase or decrease, y value is almost does not change at all throughout the x value. That means that there is a very there is a low uh, no correlation between the, those two values. So it usually have a very flat line type of the relationships. So actually. Uh, we actually using the this kind of a correlation zero value when we actually have a have a hetero heterogeneity test. Like uh, our sample is the randomized sample or not? Maybe and also to testing the what is called the collinearity kind of things. So like a fan in and fan out kind of values like this. So in that case, in the heterogeneity test, we, we do not accept this kind of plots. We actually looking for the, these plus. That means, that means X and Y does not have any kind of a correlation, which means X and Y is a very, very low collinearity kind of things. And also there is also kind of a, this one is the correlation is a zero. But the thing is that this one is actually have uh, this kind of a quadratic, quadratic kind of a relationship. In, in the, this one is actually correlation is a zero value. It's the desire to do the same thing. But in the, in the heterogeneity test kind of a perspective, these two are the very, very different. Because this one is actually kind of a, our sample point is uh, quite random. But in this case, it is a kind of like our random error, our error term is not the random. So that means there is a other, other factor or factors that contributes to this kind of error term, not randomly assigned the error term. So in that case, when we get the, this kind of a quadratic or this fan in and fan out relationship, when we testing about the error term, like a epsilon test, when we get the, this kind of a graph, our regression model does not uh, have a very good result. Our actually our regression model is the distort, uh, this a lot of a distortion, which means our regression model is a lot of issues, a lot of problem. That means because there might be need a more variable to remove the, this kind of a not random kind of a distribution of the error term. That's the, how this geocorrelation actually apply to the regression model in practice. We can learn this one in detail in the later section because in the regressions, we always testing about the, our error term, randomness of the, our error term test because in the regression assumption actually show, uh, has that uh, uh, our error term is the kind of a normal distribution between uh, with the mean is a zero and standard deviation is the one, seem close to the, this kind of a distribution. That's the basic assumption of the linear regressions. 
this which means error term should be followed or these kind of a randomized distributions like a correlation is a zero, which is the this this plot. But if the plot has the this kind of a fan out or this quadratic line as a as a this kind of things, that means our regression model does not meet, does not satisfy these kind of assumptions, like an error term assumption. In that case, we have to revisit the, our regression model. And then also thinking about the, we have to collect the more data set to, to remove the, these kind of error term to be the random like this. So this is a more like a, a little bit advanced kind of things, but anyway, in this case, we can actually get the, this kind of a correlation relationship. But keep in mind, in the later section, we can actually differentiate it, the, what's the difference between the, these two, OK? Because the, these two are the very, very different. Because in, in the third one case, this one is a, just kind of a random. This is a, not the random. So, in the fourth plot, we have a we have a, what is called a compounding variable. In this case, we don't have a compounding variable. So, in the regression perspective, in this one is actually good fit. This one is a not. To solve the problem, we have to think about the adding the adding the more variables to remove the, this kind of uh, error term kind of uh, distributions. Um, sort of, we have like a possibly possible endogeneity problem, something like this. Yeah, right. Cause, uh, cause uh, for, the, for the goodness of fit kind of a test in the linear regressions, our goal is to get the, this kind of a, this kind of a plot for the, our error term, not this one. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, so we will we will try to learn study those things in the later sections. So for now, just to keep in mind that in here correlation is a zero value, but the thing is uh, in the in the later sections, these two interpretation or meaning of the, these two things are the totally different. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so that's the thing, and then that's the end of the chapter three. So actually what I really don't like about, hate about the, this book is uh, every kind of example is a very hy hy hypothetical kind of a distribution, not the, do not use the real data set. So it is very hard to tell about the exact meaning of the, why we use this one and then uh, how we can use it for the real world data problem. So, but anyway, that's the end of the, uh, end of the, this course, and then any questions so far or anything? No, for me it was really clear. It was good. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. So, so this is it, and then and then we will maybe we will see you in two weeks, right? Due to the time kind of thing, or um, yeah. maybe next week. I think we have two weeks. I think it's the 26th is the next Okay. Week. Yeah. So in we will meet in two weeks. So so anyone to do the chapter four? Because the chapter four is now we do the linear regression with the one regressor. Yeah. Yeah, which means uh, one X and one Y variable. So we need a volunteer for that. Um, uh, I, I think twenty uh, fifth is uh, also part of the daylight saving stuff. Oh right, so April first. I guess I can do that one. We, we can I can do chapter four. Chapter four? Oh, that would be good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. So, so today is the end of the. Uh, today this is the. Uh, this is uh, what we got about what I got for the chapter four, and then uh, we wrap up the chapter uh, chapter uh, chapter three. I mean, so I will see you in two weeks. So sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks. Yeah. Bye.